G'day, everyone, and welcome to the crossover. I am Matty G, and while I sip my rosé, I'll let that man with the standard squeeze shout out to our sponsor, Matty OB, introduce himself. Hello, Matthew. Hi, mate. How are you, man? How's your weekend? Oh, look, it's not good. I'm listening to you in fantasy. So how, how would I be <laughs> being on a show with you after being with Matrix Revolutions, uh, which is the worst of all the Matrix films? Uh, it's not, <laughs> they're all bad after the first one. But, mate, yeah, you've uh, spanked me. I've got way too many injuries. Week seven was my thing in my league, but how about you, man? How's your fantasy weekend and how's your weekend been? Oh, mate, went to a, went to a concert last night, got home Ooh. late. Um, look, Party some boy. barbecuing today, ripped out some oh, stumps, and uh, yeah, kept an eye. I actually really like the uh, function on the NBA app that you can listen to it. Uh, you can pick the radio station that you want to listen to. Yep. So uh, yeah, I can keep working in the garden and uh, yeah, keep up to date with what's going on. Can I also tell you that you want to listen to the Spanish broadcast sometimes, just for fun, just for just for shits and giggles. If you've never done it before, make sure you put on the Spanish broadcast while you're driving in the car because they go absolutely bonkers for NBA. And we're going to go bonkers for your week ahead because that's what we're here to do in the crossover. We are going to look at week six straight up after this. Welcome to the ultimate super coach and fantasy sports show. You are now listening to the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast. Matty, the new the new intro gives me goosebumps. I like it. I like it. It's a good length. It's a good line. It's a good line. You know what's not a good line? Injuries. Injuries yeah. aren't a good line. Injuries aren't a good one, but they can be profitable. We're picking them up. Uh, and this is going to feed into, I guess, one of our things. I'm, I've got a thing to do this week. I'm going to ask you, we've got some segments. I'm going to ask you five, five, like five big statements. Are they true or false? We're going to introduce a new one where either myself or you make a live like ad on apps. We can actually just see the other person doing an ad yep. on the show, but we're going to talk about injuries for the week. So, Matty, let's uh, play the bit and then get us off and let's see where we can get some value leading to week six. Mate, broken Mate, legs in- and broken hips. <laughs> yeah, I know. And look, I was just looking at Atlanta and uh, Jalen mm-hmm. Johnson left the other oh, day, no. which I suppose oh, no. does – oh, yesterday, today, sorry for those of you playing at home, um, depending <laughs> where you are in the world. Um, but Jalen Johnson left Saturday's game uh, with a wrist injury and actually looked really nasty. As you have a look, he's mm. done his layup and he's banged the wrist on the back of the backboard. Uh, not something yeah. I have to worry about when I'm laying up, but um, could <laughs> could be a bump in there for, uh, for Sadiq Bay, I think. Yeah, I think he's been one of my big ads of the week. Look, I've been a big Sadiq Bay fan since that. I call I, I call him Beyblades, and I think Beyblades for me is one of the hottest ads of the week. But Griffin got some minutes in that one in Atlanta, so I guess my targets for this week would definitely be probably – I'd probably say that they're like two of my the biggest shouts for the week, you'd like reckon, for Atlanta. It'd be Griffin and definitely Sadiq Bay if he's still well, – Sadiq- Sadiq Bay has been borderline rosterable anyway uh, with the way he has that been. he's been playing. So, like, that's the one that's just glaring. Like, let's just add, like, an extra five or six minutes to what he's been doing. Um, and then Griffin goes into Sadiq Bay's roster uh, role. And, uh, yeah, I'm Sadiq Bay's a no-brainer for me. Mate, you've started with Atlanta. Should we go through? I know we've prepped up all the notes for the week. Should you want to go through for the uh, the Celts? Who's in, who's in Boston? Oh, Chris Stapps, and I've got some stocks in this man, so a bit disappointing. But, yeah, he's going to miss Sunday's game against the Hawks with a calf injury. Uh, Drew's questionable as well. I suppose the big question mark, because it's not a back-to-back, is maybe an Al Horford or or somebody like that. Uh, Derek White's always pretty good when Drew's out too. So Now, you've actually added, and this is a big thing, talk about the real ads. This is in one of our league ads. Did you pick that up? You made that transaction. Someone's picked up Sam Hauser and someone's picked up bloody hell. You picked up in Matrix. Anyway, that was in, uh, in Bailey. You picked up Al Horford. Is that what you were banking on? Just get those extra Horford minutes just to get some extra bank to finish off your week? Yeah, I think they're going to really need him. Like, have a look at how big they are outside of um, outside of Chris Stapps. They're just going to need him to bang up. I always look like he doesn't play back to backs. He's you know old enough to be yep. uh, you know a lot of our listeners' dads, but. We just need to uh, 
Yeah, we just he's need to have a look. And yeah, yeah. And he's he's been good when when he's played in minutes. Um, not he also doesn't look like he has like aged in the last 10 years. The man does not no. look like he has aged in 10 years, does he? Defense, um, Joel Embiid, pretty good going back to last week. Mate, doesn't he just? That was the reason the 76ers brought him over there in the first place those years ago was to to get the the Embiid stopper out of the way, and then he's gone back to Boston, which is fantastic. Um, now, I'm going to do this right now, talking about these guys and these ads, because we're going to get to them really quickly. Can we go to Brooklyn? Because I'm go- I need to get I need to get down the list to these very quickly, because you would have just seen what I saw in one of our leagues. There's a few people yeah. adding some guys for the Monday stream options, and I've got a Monday stream option and a view to next week. On that Horford one, though, Boston does play two games next week. So, Matty, you're going to use him, abuse him for the last day of the playoffs. Sorry, for the for the week for play and then ditch him next week to roll into something with a bit more value, yeah? Yeah, I think so. I hadn't used any um, any pickups in that leg in particular. And even in one of my other legs, I actually picked up Al Horford and then dropped him um, just so that he went to waivers rather than free agency so the guy I'm playing against couldn't pick him up. So Smart. Smart. What are we looking at in Brooklyn, brother? Um, yeah, look, Dennis Smith Jr., uh, not that that is fantasy relevant, and Cam Thomas is still out. Um, yeah, look, nothing really to look at there. Uh, I'll delve straight into Charlotte, and Nick Richards is out. Mm-hmm. Um, our boy Mark Williams is getting a bit of a run. I reckon PJ Washington's nearly droppable as well. Just a, a statement more than anything to do with Nick Richards. We were in a bit of a chat just before Miles Bridges came back and going like, we didn't know what to expect. We just recorded last week, I think with it was with uh, Kingy and Josh Lloyd and Dan Tynus. We had just literally wrapped up that, that mega pod, like the jam session just before that Charlotte game tipped off. And none of us knew what was going on. Like we were all like thinking about it. And then you, me, Brano and Mick were talking about it, like what's going to be with Bridges today. And he's had just an incredibly big, return week and so pj washington has just lost so much value off the back end of that but you're right mate he's probably absolutely droppable uh chicago though look the the whole levine thing the two guys who are in the most trade room is for chicago they're both listed as questionable uh, for sunday um zach levine do you think they're just playing it cautiously with him in chicago trying to like trying to find a deal for him because that's coming up really soon I don't think so. I think that they'll hold. And Zach Levine doesn't come across as one of those guys that's gonna gonna see it or not try if he plays or anything like that. Yep. I've always seen him sort of give 110%. I think it yep. is probably an actual small injury. But yeah, they, look, they will be cautious with him because uh, I just don't think the offers are coming in for Zach Levine though. No, they're not because it, it's the contract. And there was even the report out this week that Alex Caruso was the more – Stored up the piece. Even Patrick Williams is more sought out and what they bring for the price that they're at than the money that Levine's got. So you know the market's a little bit weird if they're like, oh no, no, please give me Patrick Williams and Alex Caruso. You 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 can keep Zach. And look, they've got Demar Derozan who's expiring at the end of this year as well. So they need to probably do something with Demar Derozan more than anything else because otherwise that money just walks off the books for for free. Like they, they oh goodbye Demar, thank you for your time here in Chicago. And you can go wherever you want. In Cleveland, thank you very much, Darius Garland, for continually just holding my season every time you get injured. On Saturday, he left the game with the Lakers with that neck strain. He came back out. He was on the bench. But I don't know what's going on with Darius Garland. I get him back. I'm happy. He is improving. I also own Donovan Mitchell and he's out, which just breaks my heart. And then all of a sudden, this is what it is. But Dean Wade is on the sidelines, and he got those minutes. Isaac Okoro, Karis Levert, they're probably going to get the big pickups. But Craig Porter Jr., Maddie, Craig Porter Jr., I think, has some very sneaky value, and he is available in quite a lot of Yahoo leagues as well. Craig Porter is not rostered widely. Yeah, I went to the uh, I went to the local with uh, with Mally last week to watch Cleveland play Philly, and Craig Porter Jr. just had these really really phenomenal plays down the stretch that just made me go, wow, this, this guy is yep. something. Um, I've picked up Darius Garland in a, in a lead trading for him because somebody was injury concerns. I was like, I won't be that unlucky. Yeah, I am. <laughs> uh, but uh, look, Craig Porter Jr., especially if Darius Garland's out, should be rostered. I, yeah, 100%. I reckon, honestly, yeah. I would roster Craig Porter Jr. before Chris Levert. 
there you go. I think I think Craig Porter Jr. is the best look. I think they're giving him extra minutes there in, in Cleveland. He's been playing really, really well. He's been dependable. Look, Karras just loves the one-man show. I think it was, I don't know, it was like one minute left in the game against the Lakers. And Karras still thought he could win them the game independently, dribbled the whole length of the court, split a defender, went in for a layup and missed it. And that just about sums up who Karras Levert is as an NBA basketball player. Um <laughs> For me, uh, Dallas, Derek Lively uh, missed Saturday's game. Um, I think it was a back injury with Derek. Derek Jones Jr. continues to be a nice little flyer option is available in a lot of leagues for him. Denver, Jamal Murray. This is, I want to talk about this, Matty, with you. I've got an interesting stat for you. I know that you're an ESPN guy, so you might be able to whip this, guys. You might just be able to whip it out everywhere. This has been a bit of a concern, not a concern for me, but I just don't know what we're doing. I know he's a bit of a game time decision, and I know he didn't play well. Last game, he played 25 minutes. He went one from seven. I'm talking about one Mr. Reggie Jackson, who is only rostered in 20% of Yahoo leagues. And apart from the pretty shitty game last one, he has been all right the past couple the past couple of weeks. Like he's definitely been a streamable guy while Jamal Murray's been out with the hamstring injury. And yeah. he's he's only rostered in 20% of leagues. And this week. Denver has a four-game week coming ahead. We'll, we'll do that big thing at the end. But for me, I'm looking at Reggie Jackson as a nice little bring-in target for this week with four games ahead for Denver. And they're one of six teams. They do have a tough schedule, to be fair, but they need him with Jamal Murray still out. And I've got him in a couple leagues. Uh, it should be noted that he is probable as well. Uh, just uh, that last game he did leave with a little bit of an injury. Uh, but yep. they will need him and they'll push him to play, uh, injured or not. Uh, it did seem to hamper him. He has only had 1.6 turnovers per game, um, yeah. and he had six in the last game, a uh, bit banged up. So, Yeah, I agree. Mate, take us through Detroit for me. Uh, yeah, Boyan Bogdanovich is still out and Monte Morris is still out. Um, look, um, yeah, they just don't have anyone talented playing anyway. Uh, so we'll just leave that. Um, well, I will, no, this is it. This is it. This is my live ad. This is my segment. Yeah. This is my ad. I'm going to do it now because it's Detroit and they're all shit. I'm going to, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to, I'm just going to double check this. He's rostered in 34% of league. He's gone up 4%. And I'm going to do this and you can get the notification <laughs> on your phone right now. And I don't believe I'm doing this, but I, but I think I have to at this point. Only because of his efficiency has been. There we go. I've done it. Who have I just added from the Detroit Pistons? Uh, Jaden Ivey. There you go. Talk I've us, dropped talk Jeremy. Drop, mate. mate, look, I've, I've dropped I've dropped Jeremy Sohan because just the point Sohan experiment. I'll be look. He'll be in and out of waiver wise. I think for most of the season. I think we all wanted good things for it. It just hasn't been consistent, and the lack of points and efficiency there have been concerning. And I've li- look, I've liked it a lot, but I just think there's better options out there. And I've been thinking about opening up that streaming spot because I've got Wendell Carter Jr. and Ja Morant. I've got Wendell Carter Jr. injured. We don't have an IL. We don't have an IR plus. None of that shit. Like I, I took Ja Morant at a bargain basement, 112 pick or something like that, having to wear it for the cost of the season. And I've been about 60, 70, 80 points off winning points, but still really competitive most weeks. I just need points. I need them threes. I need some peripherals and an improved efficiency. And I really think I'm going to get that from Jaden Ivey. And the Detroit Pistons are one of only six teams with a four-game schedule this coming week. So I get the Sunday game from him. Big tick for me so I can finish off my week strong against you, by the way. Thank you very much. Uh, Not that I'm going to win three pointers against you. But I'm just liking... no, I'm not. You're 12 in front, and Donovan Mitchell was out two games this week, and if I can, don't even start me on that. But um, no, look, I think there's really good value for Jaden Ivey right now. I really like what he's been bringing to the table. I think he is available in a lot of leagues. I think there's this, like, he was really slow to start the season, and I think that's really put people down on what Jaden Ivey can do and who he can be. And I think that's what you got to look for sometimes when you're looking to make these pickups. And for me, Jaden Ivey, he can get you threes, he can get you steals, he can throw in some assists. And he's been doing it, though, at a really incredible efficiency. In fact, just putting him on my league, here we go. Where is his, uh, where's his numbers at? His efficiency for the past couple of weeks has been this. His last two weeks, he's been at 569 from the field. For the season, he's at 529. His free throws, his three-pointers haven't been as consistent. But look, in the last two weeks, he's 13 points, 
2.7 rebounds, 3.3 assists, almost a steal a game. The turnovers, look, I'm getting them anyway. But for me, I think he's a must roster at. I think he's a must roster guy or definitely a streaming target for week six this week, Matty. Yeah, I think he's a streaming target. I wouldn't say that he's must roster. They don't even know what they're doing over there in Detroit with those minutes. Like, you know what? Next week we could be talking about Killian Hayes. Yep. Yep. And we did. We did this a couple of weeks ago. Killian Hayes was the guy. You know what I mean? Like, Killian Hayes was the bloke that we were all after. But, um, mate, it turned out to be – it turned out this week to be Jaden Ivey who's been dependable. There's nothing really much going on apart from Golden State and Houston. Indiana? What's going on? Is Naismith? Naismith. Yeah. Yeah? With the wrist strain, the Clippers, nothing's going on there. It's, it, does it feel weird to do an injury report for the Clippers and be like, hey, everybody's healthy? Yeah, yeah exactly. They're just head cases. <laughs> They're head cases. Look, it's going a little bit okay there. A, a, a bit of a poor game today from Kawhi Leonard. Buy low, possibly on Kawhi. And I'm a Kawhi, I'm a Kawhi Leonard owner. But when Kawhi does things like this, plus the constant fear that injury is going to just derail your entire season. This is where you could probably go to an owner of Kawhi Leonard, who's not me, because I wouldn't fall for it, but someone would fall for it, and be like, mate, look, he's oh, there's a lot going on in the Clippers, isn't it? Do you, do you want to have a look at Kawhi and get a nice piece back? I I nearly could look at um if somebody was trying to like if somebody thought that they were buying low on Kawhi, and I haven't been mm-hmm. super impressed with Kawhi. Honestly, as a Kawhi owner, I could buy. It. Me too. I mean, I could buy it. I might not because I'm not going to just take – it's like trash and treasure. They're like, oh, come on, he'll get injured sooner. I'm like, you don't know that. We don't know the future of injuries. But we do know that injuries are also currently going on in another Los Angeles team in the Lakers with Cam Reddish and Rui Hachimura. Now, the Wish Kid has been the one to step up lately. Do you, are you liking the play of Austin Reeves of late, Matty? Yeah, he's been really good. Um, a lot better off the bench, to be honest. I actually really like it for both. I actually really like it for their whole team. Him coming yep. off the bench, uh, being that, being that spark, actually being in the finishing lineup still. Um, I actually think that that's a fantastic adjustment by the Lakers. Yeah, I do too. And look, you you've been a big fan of D'Angelo Russell this season. He's been playing really, really well. Um, for them as well, but it also doesn't play the crunch time. Like they much prefer the crunch time where it's Reeves and LeBron in the pick and roll like then D'Lo out there, which yep. I've been a big fan of. Um, mate, take us through the next few teams, too, brother. I'm not too worried. Ooh, you know D'Lo has been the 35th ranked player on Yahoo this season. And yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just fantastic. Like um, I think you got him. Where did you people, get him in that team? You got him in like the wait, 90s, was it? In one of our leagues? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like in the 90s. Um, yeah. I actually drafted him in like four or five leagues uh, because everybody was low on D'Lo. That's probably why I was making a bit of a hoo-ha in the preseason about it. I just thought people were overlooking him and they still yep. are. But like all they this are. negativity about him not playing crunch time. Do you want to know what that, that doesn't really matter for fantasy. You want to know what's hard during fantasy? I'd like to know crunch what's time. hard. Crunch time. The cr- crunch, crunch time crunch time's really, really hard in fantasy because you, you get your turnovers. Everybody defends a lot harder. Delo's getting his minutes outside of that crunch time. Like that doesn't matter for my fantasy team, whether he's playing crunch time, whether he's winning games or anything like that. I just need him to get those minutes and he's been really good. So, Do you know what does matter in, in fantasy this season? Playing against the Wizards. <laughs> yep. Like there are... I am so absolutely piss scared being a Franz Wagner owner in a couple of leagues that I'm not <laughs> going to get the return from him because this coming week, the Magic play the Wizards twice. <laughs> so yeah. if you own Paolo Bancaro, if you own, oh, geez, yeah, Franz Wagner, the bench mob, if, if they get out of the gates in that first game and it's going to look like that in the second one, I just think it's just a shambles because you can just put a lot of, fucking points up against the Wizards this season. Um, mate, the Magic don't score very well, though. So, like, look for somebody like this Paul Anthony or someone to have a rip a week off the yep. bench and will probably just play a lot of minutes. Cole Anthony has been one of the most dependable, like, waiver stream guys, like, bench <laughs> like bench mob guys in fantasy basketball this season. Like, he's just – it's like he's actually settled into who he could probably become in fantasy and real basketball – for the next two or three years. 
like 100%. Yeah. Right out one. Um, tell us through your your team, your love, your heart, your grizz. Um, yeah, look, Tillman's still out. Kennard's still out. Uh, we've got those couple of way. We got Shaq Harrison and Jalen Noel on 10 day contracts due to over, I think it's six of our regular six. rotation. Yeah, six, six of our top 10 guys being injured at the moment. Um, look, hopefully we get a good draft pick because this is dismal. Mate, I'm going to talk you talk you up. You've been on um, hey there, Vasquez Jr. in Miami. Bam missed like the back to back. Butler was out. Um, Hay uh, Hay Smith has been out. Duncan Robinson missed the last two games. Tyler Hero's out. Like there is just so much going on in Miami. But Jazquez and Josh Richardson seem to be the pickups there with the Miami Heat this season. But I'm curious as this one. Can we just talk about Chris Middleton in Milwaukee? Because he missed the game on his, yeah. like, you know, on he's going to miss Sunday on the, the Portland Trailblazers because it's, well, one, the Blazers, but that's his management plan. He didn't play well last game. Are we still kind of sleeping on the potential long-term return that Chris Middleton can get when this plan is off? Yeah, I had a chat about it the other day because, like, he obviously left injured in the Washington game. Uh, he yeah. only played in those 13 minutes, but he'd actually played a season high in minutes the the game before, which yeah. I thought was quite encouraging. He was all right, like 12 points, shot it pretty poorly, but got those seven assists, actually got seven assists yeah. in the game before as well. But the yeah. fact that he went and played 29 minutes, the most minutes that he'd played, and then he got injured in the next game, probably just wards me off a little bit. But I think that he's borderline rosterable with how he's been playing anyway. Like if, Yep. Somebody like um Jaime Hasquez Jr. was doing this sort of stats. We'd probably be talking about him a little bit anyway. I I saw him drop today in a league. I think that yep. that's an overreaction. Uh, I actually think I he's a bit of a buy low if you can get him for your worst player. That was one of our leagues. Was that's in my league? Like my personal friends yep. and family. That's my that's my yeah, that's my close mates yep. league. I saw him drop two, and I'm like, look, I understand the need to react to him being out for the next game and you might need to make a last minute, you know, effort to win this week, but we're at week six right now. So we're fastly approaching like the 20% done through the season. I freak out at 25. I, I freak out by week eight. I, I freak out by week seven or eight. Like that's when I start to be like, okay, I'm not on the right path. And that's kind of why I took Morant in, in my friends and family league. I'm like, eh, I'll be fine. I haven't had a fully healthy team in one league all year. But I'm coming close, and that's what buoys me up, and and hopefully that'll buoy out. But Minnesota, they've had Jaden McDaniels. He's going to miss two or three weeks, mate. An ex Grizzly, some value there. Yeah, I really like slow mo. I got in a bit of, a, bit of an argument with Skiddy about that. I think slow mo. Oh, uh, I heard that. I, I actually really like slow mo. Um, so do I. I just want to be here with you and hold hands and be like in the in the slow mo support session. And be like, fuck you, Skitty. He's actually good. Look, Kyle Anderson isn't actually that slow. It's just his mannerisms <laughs> and how uh, how lengthy he is and how those big, long steps just suddenly from the free throw line, he's got these big steps and these long levers and he's and he's putting it in and flipping it in. Um, look, got a little oh, bit of ball oh. handling. Uh, we'll we'll oh. play a little bit with the bench as well. But, yeah, look, I think... Think that he's um he's definitely a play in the next couple of weeks, probably in fourteen teams and a bit of a look in twelve teams. So, and with Jay, uh, in New Orleans with Zion Williams from out for Sunday's game, you can look to pretty much stream in. And Matt Wright, put Dyson Daniels, our Aussie bloke, right there. Uh, he'll probably be with the stream up there. No real news in New York, but Jalen Williams has actually been injured. I know someone traded for him. Um, a hip injury. Hip injuries can sometimes be lingering for Oklahoma City. Monitoring that, I'm not going to mention anything about Josh Giddy. Not going to go down that path. It's under investigation. And until that time, there's no absolute impact on fantasy whatsoever. Our just perception of the bloke has changed incredibly. But when they investigate I mean, these things, there's no outcome. I mean, let's just... Let's just let's just see what happens there. But but played yep. played a pretty good game today in in normal yep. sort of minutes. Uh, didn't play down the stretch. I suppose is is worrying long term. 
Um, but yeah, heading into Orlando, uh, Markel Fultz is still injured with that knee tendonitis. I suppose that's probably helping the whole Jugs, uh, Jugs, uh, so, ooh, Suggs, um, Anthony Hull situation there. Uh, that whole rotation, I think, gets adjusted when Markel Fultz comes back. And it's rumored that Wendell Carter Jr. could be back later on in this week. So your run of Mo Wagner and Gogo Dubadze, Gogo Dubadze? Goga uh, could be out by later in the, in the week, moving into Philadelphia. Look, Kelly Oubre, the big news for this one is Kelly Oubre Jr. is going to be reevaluated this week. Now, that doesn't exactly, when you get reevaluated, you don't get to return to action. But the fact that we were thinking he was going to be missing like close to possibly 30, I think it was 30 games. I originally like, that's the season, like, yeah. Yeah. Like to be reevaluated in a week is, is kind of crazy. So that's going on. Mate, the Phoenix situation with Beal out, uh, Kevin uh, Durant and Yuta Watanabe a questioner, which probably means they won't miss Sunday. There's been a lot of value, back-end value this season in Phoenix for streaming options. Who have you liked in the Suns? And who can we probably get some run out of with the Suns this coming week? I actually picked up Grayson. Um, you did? That's why I asked. In, in a... In a league, yeah. Look, in the last five games, and like, let's not even look at his stats, even though they were they've been pretty serviceable. Um, he's played over thirty minutes, I think, in probably seventy percent of the games this year. Played forty three minutes the other day, thirty seven minutes in his last game. I just think when you're risking stream targets. Uh, let's just look at the people that are going to get the opportunity. He's been the 90th ranked player anyway. Uh, people hate him, so you quite often find him on the wire. I don't really understand like these people that only get people that they like or maybe don't look at people. Yeah. Like I've got Miles Bridges in three legs. Obviously, I yeah. don't stand for all that's, um, that, that's happened with him in the recent situations, but I'm here to win fantasy basketball. So uh, yeah. Grayson Allen, even though he's a bit of a grub on the court, uh, yeah, could be really good. I've actually seen some people drop Eric Gordon, and um, I think Grayson Allen's a better pickup than Eric Gordon at the moment. A hundred percent. And I think at the beginning of the season, we all thought it was Eric Gordon, but this is what age does. Like Eric Gordon is a lot older. He'll come into like fantasy relevance whenever, but Grayson Allen has seemingly endearing himself to the Phoenix team and getting minutes right there. And look, that's great for them. Who else is good? Drew Eubanks. Man has been solid as a rock as a rebounds, field goal, and blocks specialist this season. So look for them. Look, it is a three-game week for them. So we'll get to the games in a second. Uh, Portland, no one really to worry about. Sacramento, Keegan Murray has been injured. Toronto is all good to go. Uh, Larry Market missing a game always makes my heart skip a beat, being Utah and what they did with him at the end of last season. Jordan Clark's missed Saturday. And, mate, your friend, Jordan Poole. Oh, he had a sore ankle. I don't, don't know why you've got all this hate for Jordan Poole. What's he ever done to you? This, this, look, it's not what he did to me. It's what he did to my friend Draymond. That's what I'm. No, I'm getting. No, I just, I don't hate Jordan Poole. I just, I just, I am amused by it because of the. I don't know, man. Everyone was so like into like, oh, he's going to be so good this season in Washington. He's going to have hey, free reign. He's going to. It's was it's Washington. Bradley Beal was a great player. John Wall were good players. Like yes. it's where basketball players go to die. Um, I have picked him up in some <laughs> legs because you know what? He scored over twenty four points in his last three games. Yep. I think that he's gonna be a serviceable fantasy player this year. I think this is now I'm gonna call this one. If you wanted a time to draft Jordan Poole. This is it. If you want to not draft, sorry, it's a trade for Jordan Poole. I think you. I think it's coming dangerously close to you being able to get him right now, and that's it. Like if you do not get Jordan Poole in the next week or so, your window on him could probably close very, very quickly. Uh, Danilo Gallinari also had the night off with rest, and Ryan Rollins is out, so there's nothing really to go on there. But I do think it crack it. I'll get a wine. I'll get a wine while you take us through the next bit. You got a beer? I want a wine. I'm, I've run out of my bloody wine. But I, look, Go I think now is the time. I think now is the time to trade for him, mate. I don't think I think in a week or so, people. I think his stock's going to rise a little bit in the next fortnight, and people aren't going to be able to get him for as cheap as they can now. 
Jordan Paul. He did look a bit more comfortable. He, he's even his efficiency's gone up, I suppose, in the last week. Um, look, I sort of got him as a throw in because people were panicking on Jordan Poole. And I'm like, mate, I'll take him. Like, I'm not worried about my field goal percentage in this league anyway. Um, his yep. free throw percentage has still been really good. Um, yeah, look, he's been he's been good, but like Tyus Jones, we know he's a great player, and he's been doing quite ordinary in Washington as well. The yep. only person who's just used to this Barks case now because he's been there a bit longer is Coos. Um, and he's yeah. just like okay <laughs> with taking his money and getting out there and getting his shots and having a bit of flair yeah. out there in Washington and just being the Washington the bandit out there. Yeah. yeah, he is. He's, he's the guy. I'll, I'll hit the game preview. Take us through the uh, – let's talk about the week ahead. There's the grid up there. You can talk us through how many games are on what. I'll pour myself a bloody glass of wine. And we can do – not the game preview. Kids, this is the weekly preview. He's heating up. Look, when we have a look at the games coming up, uh, we've got a really good slate. We've got five on Monday, we've got eight on Tuesday, we've got seven on Wednesday, nine on Thursday, six on Friday, and 12 on Saturday. Um, Ooh, we really Ooh, like we. for the week. Uh, that last week was a bit of a basket case, having 14 games on one day, uh, 10 on another day. Of course, having that game of oh, that week of none, oh, that game of none, uh, day of none. What is going We're on not even, right now? No, no. But, can I just say, we've, we've been in store for nothing. This absolutely fuck schedule, Maddie. I think it reaches an all-time peak high next week. I'm pretty yeah. sure that in week seven, there is either one or two games. I'm pretty sure it's one. It's either one or two games on Saturday with no games on Sunday. It's like a five-day fantasy week next week. Yeah. It's shocking. What I, I was just saying, I really love it this week because last week just having that donut in the middle of the week just really hurt. Mm. Seven and eight, not only is it good for the podcast, we can keep it to like that sort of 30, 35, 40 minute episodes. Like Skitty and I did an hour and a half because we did 16 game preview. Um, we did the same thing the other week. There was like, yeah, there's like, we, I think we did a 14 game. Are we just trying to like, and we, 14 games after like some ridiculous game schedule because it was back to backs and we we're just talking for an hour and a half about basketball. Not that we hate talking for an hour and a half about basketball, but geez, it's a lot of bloody games. Like, that's a lot yeah. of basketball games. I just want to get people on their, on their drive to and from work for the right amount of time. Like, I hope you're not driving for an hour and a half on the way to work in the morning. Absolutely not. And look, talking about that one, we will talk about. Let's talk about because it's back to backs. Should we talk about? Should we talk about our friend's bonus bank? Should we just make this a bit of alliteration? I think we should do a yeah. little bit of alliteration because we're going to talk about the back to backs. The back to backs brought to you by Bonus Beak by bonus by Bonus Bank. Maddie, tell us a bit a bit of a Bonus Bank on our uh, Bonus Bank for our back to backs before we get into those for the week. They're Australia's number one match betting website. Um, I've been using them just to get a little bit of cash on the side. Um, it is actually tax free too. Um, I'm is. not sure if I can legally advertise that, but um, we're not look, legally it's, we're it's, we're legally advertising everything. Everything is very legal. Um, if you use the code Insight, you get 25 percent off. I suppose their um, their advice. Uh, they've got all the calculators and they've actually got some really good tutorials which you can get before you sign up. Um, so that you can have a little bit of a look and understand what they're doing. But basically they take advantage of bookmakers, bonus bets and promotions to make a risk-free, uh, some risk-free bets every week. Um, and yeah, look, people have been converting their cash easily with bonus bank on average, making about two and a half grand in the first two months. Um, of course, depending on how much money you're throwing in, but if you use co promo code insight, you get 25% off. Um, it's worth a punt. Yeah, look, that 25% off goes to your first month of subscription. Give it a thing. Just try the premium service for your first month. Get in there. Give it a crack. The premium, like it's free to start with, but the premium content that unlocks, you get 12 tutorials. It guides you through everything. And we give you, thanks to Insight, 25% off that first month subscription to give it a good hot crack. Get in there. Give yourself some cash. Thanks to our good friends, Bonus Bank. Use promo code Insight, lowercase or uppercase. It does not matter. And now let's give you, as we said, your back-to-backs. In back-to-backs for this week on Monday and Tuesday, there are none that kooks it up. On your Tuesday and Wednesday, you've got the Houston Rockets, the Sacramento Kings, and the Toronto Raptors. 
that rolls into Wednesday and Thursday for the Detroit Pistons. Hello, Jade and Ivy. Welcome to the Blue Chips, uh, the Los Angeles Clippers, the Los Angeles Lakers, and the Utah Jazz. In Thursday, Friday, you've got the Knicks and the Spurs, and Friday and Saturday, the Mavs, the Nugs, the Grizz, the New Orleans Pelicans, the Orlando Magic, the Phoenix Suns, and there are no back-to-backs on Saturday or Sunday or Sunday rolling into Monday. So you really want to maximize those streams and those ads through those. We'll actually tweet this out on our Inside Fantasy Sports uh Twitter this week. I'll put that together in a little graphic and we'll throw that up there. But Maddie, the teams of the week getting four games, as we said, these are Denver, Detroit, the two LA teams, the Clips and the Lakers, the Pelicans and the Jazz as well to get the most out of it. Yeah. And it's, there's a lot of good options there. Of course, you know, we were having a chat about the dart throw that is Detroit. Uh, but when you have a look at the Clippers, like they have some elite players, but you can have a look at blokes like, you know, your Terrence Manns, your Norman Powell's, you know. All yeah, here we go. Let's, blokes, do it. Those... Let's do it this way. Let's make a segment out of it. Let's do targets. Let's do targets for each one, Maddie. Let's do this. Targets acquired. We can do targets. Right, hit, hit me with the team. Let's go. Ooh. ooh. The Nuggets. Hmm. All right. Let's have a look at Denver. Um, I actually really like Denver um, outside of that. They have Reggie a wonderful Jackson scenery. Probably, yeah. 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 Look, the Mile High City, um, it's probably KCP and Reggie Jackson. Um, with how ordinary Aaron Gordon has been as well, maybe not a waiver wire target, but maybe a little bit of a buy low situation. Um, if you think that he can bounce back. Look, he's playing... 40 minutes at the moment and doing a lot of cardio, I suppose, is what yeah. I would say about Aaron Gordon. Uh, in the Pistons. When we have a look at the Pistons, um, look, I do like <laughs> Jaden Ivey. I'm just not sure that he's rosterable over somebody like Alec Burks. Um, he's just, he could Ooh, be a little bit of a firecracker. Words. He can be. Yeah. Um, yeah, Kevin Knox has sort of worn off a, his welcome a little bit. He's going into those sort of mid twenties of minutes. Um, I just found you. I just found you. He should be Ross. I just found you a picture of your Detroit Pistons. Yeah, they're freaking ordinary, aren't they? <laughs> they are not, did you expect better things for them this season? Here's here's one of my big questions. I want to do you five questions. I'll do you a couple as they come to it. Did you expect the Pistons with a healthy Cade Cunningham to be better this year? Yes, I did. Yeah, I think that the young core I just expected to get better, and even with Thompson's been really good, Duran's been yeah. really good, Cunningham's been really good. I suppose it's been a step in the right direction, but I just don't like watching their games, and I wonder whether Cade Cunningham will never be as good as somebody like the Aaron Fox. Like his career mm. is. As a future all star that everybody considered oh, hot, him to be, hot, I think hot, it's, hot, 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 hot. I think it's at a bit of a turning point. Like whether I'm, he's just a good player on bad teams for the rest of his career, or whether he can actually win some games and and turn around an organization. Like and whether he I just becomes. That, a, yeah. No, I th I think yes. I, I I'm actually listening to you, and you're the probably. I'm going to give my hat off to you. I'll doff my cap to you, sir. I think you're one of the first people to actually just go out there and say it because we want good things for Cade Cunningham. We like we like what we hear about Cade Cunningham. But I think you're the first bloke to just literally openly go on a record. I'm gonna I'm gonna mark this moment. This would be I'm marking it. I want this to be I'm I'm marking this on the stream just to say the word that yeah, maybe this is his destiny, his path. Because De'Aaron Fox is someone we like the promise of. He worked hard at his game. He got better. And yes, this is not to malign the injuries that have obviously stacked up of Kate Cunningham the last couple of years. Like you can't just, you can't deny that impact, but it does impact players long-term. Like look at Anthony Hardaway. Like look at Penny way back in the day, like the change of an organization, this guy who's going to bring in the fresh face. And then he got away with, then he got the injury bug. And then he never lived up to that promise of being who he was. And, and you're right. Like I know we're talking three seasons in, but in another two or three seasons, we still want to be having the same conversation that we're having about him that we're having right now. And, and it's no. So, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, look, um, I just 
even watching him play, I just struggle to get any enjoyment out of watching Detroit. And I'll watch anyone. <laughs> I'm watching the Grizzlies play at the moment. I actually <laughs> like watching Washington you love them. play. But Detroit. <laughs> like I, I actually I love watching Danny Adler play. Washington game over Detroit. <laughs> I would 100% watch a Washington game over Detroit. So I actually don't. I like it's it's fun to watch them. I think they got some personalities. The Clippers. I I don't know sure how I feel about watching them right now. They're playing some decent basketball, I guess. But the, you, I think you hit the names on the head there. Terrence Mann and Norman Powell. Look, I always love Powell. I've uh, I love what he can do for you off the bench. I love him as a starter. But he's definitely streaming a target. The the Lakers today. Now with this whole whole thing with Rui being out, they're leaning on Christian Wood a little bit and Max Christie. I knew they liked him, but I did not expect Max Christie to be playing minutes down the stretch against the Cavs. I didn't expect that today. Yeah, look, I didn't. I actually didn't get to uh, see this one, but he played 33 minutes. Like, he played more minutes than D'Angelo Russell and Austin Ray. <laughs> Put that into yeah. perspective. Yeah, I was I'm – completely. I'm just going to keep my eye on that with them out. They've been – I was hearing talk in the preseason. I mentioned this on the Lake Spot. I've been here and talk about how much they just love Max Christie. Like everyone in the organization is like, yeah, have you? But Max Christie, like they're so invested in Max Christie being on this team. He will probably sign a rookie extension with the Lakers and play for them for the next amount of time. That's my early prediction for Max Christie. But just watch what's happening because if he's going to get that run, he's going to be value. In the Pelicans team so this week. Just who, hold on. Ooh. I hate talking yeah. about the Lakers, but I've just got to hold either. on to one thing. They're only hold on going to eight deep at the moment, which makes mm-hmm. – the guys that are playing minutes just relevant. Like you could even have a dart throw at a Jackson Hayes in deeper leagues or, you know, like Christian Wood, you like Jackson Hayes played yeah. more minutes than Christian Wood at the moment. Like everybody else yeah. played over 30 minutes except for Jackson Hayes and Christian Wood. Like I just think I always see the Lakers as a team that's under the microscope. So you can't find any yeah. value right now going eight deep with, Names like Jackson Hayes, Christian Wood, and Max Christie, there is probably opportunity there. And I'm going to say, this was probably one of, I'm not, I know that we all think that I'm pro Lakers because I'm a LeBron fan. I'm not. I just want good things for LeBron. I'm not a pro Laker. I'm pro good basketball, but the Lakers play really good basketball when it's not, their pick and roll game is just ridiculously good to watch. Like these guys, when they were clicking on all cylinders, they are just one of, they are big, like they are a big, scary team. And I love watching big, scary guys do big, scary things on a basketball court, especially when one of them is LeBron James. And the you're right. You're, you're bang on, Maddie. Like when it's that many people, there can only be assets for so much. LeBron's going to have to sit. Davis has to sit. Christian Wood is the backup for Davis anytime. He's the, he's the Thomas Bryant of this year. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if anything happens to Davis, it's, it becomes unfortunately – Unfortunately for the Lakers, because I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, it's great. We've got Christian Wood. No. Unfortunately for the Lakers, their backup is Christian Wood. I'd add Jackson Hayes before Christian Wood. I would too. I would too. I like Jackson Hayes. And this is the thing. He played 21 see, like, minutes. He played He played five more minutes than Wood in the last game. But, but, but Wood's been playing well. Like when he's getting the chance on these things, he's actually playing decent. His switchability this season, he seems to be reinvigorated with committing to defense. So I'm just really, if you, especially if you need some defensive stats and rebounds, Wood would be the shout there. The Pelicans, look, Jordan Hawkins continues to be a guy you can stream on in. Dyson Daniels there. And the Jazz, yeah, he's good. And the Jazz, look, Kessler's back and he was good today. And I was so happy. God, I was so happy. I was happy as a pig shit was. today, Maddie. Off a bench was. roll to start, a double double to start the block. I was like, "Oh, thank you, Walker. Thank you. You've come back." I, I expected him to get four points and three rebounds. That's all I expected. I think that's sort of what you can expect from him. Like that, that he got eleven and eleven and two. I think that he can probably be a fifteen, ten and two guy, um, rounding yep. out the year. So. And that's exactly what I wanted from him. And this was in a bench roll. So this is now, yes, it was without Lowry, obviously, but this is the thing. Like he he has that value. And when they're not trying to make him stretch the floor full time and put him out there on the three-point line and him call for the ball because he's out there, it's like, you've done, we've done this in training, guys. You've put me on the corner. If you just pass me that, like you can literally see him answering for the ball because they think that they're going to pass it to him because it's a play that they've run in a set in training where they're stretching the floor with Walker Kessler. Just if he gets back close to the rim in that dunker spot and that UCL injury is healed up, mate, he's he's an absolute shout. I think 
Maddie, I've got one more question for you. I think I've got my one question. I think we're done. I think we've done it in 45 minutes. We've looked at the week ahead. Like we've got the game okay. schedule. We've got our back-to-backs. Like Tuesday, Wednesday, kids, get a Houston Rocket, get a, get a Sacramento King or get a Toronto Raptor. On Wednesday, Thursday, you pick yourself up a Piston, a Clip, a Laker or a Jazz guy. Because they're all relatively low volume days, as you said, Matty. Like you caught out the days. Recap us with that in a second. Thursday, Friday, get yourself a New York Knickerbocker or a San Antonio Spursian. On Friday, Saturday, pick yourself up a Dallas Yahoo, a Golden Nugget, a Bear, another Pelican, get yourself some Magic or a Phoenix Sun. Easy. Mate, I reckon you're a bit of a Pelican with those nicknames, but anyway. The Knickerbockers is actually their official name, and I'm just calling it at that. Someone literally decided to call a basketball team after an underpant garment, and that is the truth of the matter. Yeah, that's fair. Like, and also, who who calls their team the Pelicans? You're based in New Orleans. You should have called yourself the New Orleans Blues. You should have called yourselves the Blues. You should have been the Blues from the day you bloody started in New Orleans. Get your head right. Get your mind right, Dan Gilbert. Not Dan Gilbert. Who's the bloody owner? Who's the, Whoever the owner is of the New Orleans Pelicans, who I can't remember right now, change your bloody team name because Pelican is a dud bird and they scare children. And that's all I'm going to say about it. I was just using it to make fun of you. So there's there's the uh, writing on the wall. Mate, I'm dead set passionate about it, Matty. <laughs> Mate, are we ready to wrap this up, I think? I think we are, guys. Thank you so much for joining us for the crossover. Go get your ads for this week. Again, as we said, it is a short week until the end with no Sundays. You're playing a six-day fantasy week. Cheers to you, Matrix. Sounds make good. Make sure you like and cheerio. Make sure, cheerio. Make sure you like and subscribe to all things fantasy sports with Insight Podcast Network. We'll catch you soon.